What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 298 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Uh, since I have pretty much exhausted my Grant Morrison library and talked about almost everything that he has written at DC Comics, uh, I figured that now would be a good time for me to go back and talk about uh, some of Mark Wade's Justice League stuff, which fits around Grant Morrison's Justice League stuff that I talked about last week like a glove. Uh, Mark Wade did some Justice League stuff before, during, and after Grant Morrison's JLA run, and so today I'm going to be talking about Justice League, Midsummer's Nightmare, uh, co-written by Fabian Nicesia and Mark Wade, with art by Jeff Johnson and Derek Robertson. This is a three-issue miniseries uh, that came immediately before Grant Morrison's JLA run and is pretty much a prequel that leads right into it. Uh, so the premise of this book is that uh, the members of the Justice League, they wake up in this uh, fictional world, if you will, a dreamlike world where they are not superheroes. Uh, superheroes still exist in this world, but none of the characters that we know as superheroes are superheroes in this world. Uh, Bruce Wayne's parents are still alive. He never became the Batman. Uh, Clark Kent is just a reporter at uh, the Daily Planet. Arthur Curry works at a large uh, fishing conglomerate. Uh, Kyle Rayner is just a comic book artist. Wally West is a teacher. Uh, that one kind of threw me for a loop. Uh, Diana Prince is also a teacher at a private girls' school. Uh, none of them have superpowers, but uh, there's like two-thirds of the planet's population that does have superpowers. Uh, they all are, uh, I guess you could say, victims or uh, beneficiaries of the spark, which gives ordinary human beings uh, fairly uh, common superpowers. Most of them have super strength or they can fly. Uh, some of them mutate into monsters. And uh, turns out all of this is the doing of Dr. Destiny, who is a, a longtime foe of the Justice League. And he is being manipulated slash controlled by this guy called No Man, uh, K-N-O-W Man. And uh, we find out at the very end, I'm going to spoil the ending of this just a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's a huge spoiler, but we find out at the very end that No Man is actually trying to save the planet, or at least he claims that he is. Uh, he uh, is actually thousands of years old. Uh, he is a Neanderthal uh, who got these abilities from uh, one of the controllers, and the controllers are kind of uh, distant cousins to the Green Lantern Corps. Uh, they were created by uh, some of the aliens that are somewhat uh, connected to the Guardians of the Universe, and uh, one of the controllers gave this Neanderthal on Earth uh, some abilities to see into the future, and and uh, he sees uh, this giant threat coming to planet Earth, and he was trying to prepare the planet uh, so that they could defend themselves. And he does not believe that the Justice League is capable of defeating this threat, so he was trying to uh, give them ordinary human lives, uh, basically to keep them out of the way so that he could protect the planet. And uh, it kind of ends abruptly uh, where the Justice League says, no, we're not going to let you give us these false lives. And then he says, okay, good luck fighting this threat, and good luck protecting the planet. And then he leaves, and then the Justice so he goes like, you know, he had a good point. What if we formed a team together? What if we became the Justice League? And it's a little weird because there was a Justice League book going on at this time. I'm 99% sure there was. I haven't read it uh, that close to uh, this era, but uh, at the beginning of Grant Morrison's Justice League run, uh, we get to see some of those, uh, I hate to call them second tier characters, but uh, characters like Metamorpho and Nuklon, uh, they were part of the League and they were complaining that the big guns were coming to kind of kick them out of the uh, Justice League. League satellite. And so uh, there was a Justice League team at this time, so it's a little weird that we don't see any mention of them at all in this story. Uh, what does No Man think about Nuklon and Metamorpho and their Justice League team? Uh, does he think that they're not capable of defending the Earth either? Uh, we don't know. And uh, we don't hear the heroes even mention those characters either. Uh, so that's a little weird. It's also a little strange at the end when Superman is giving his big speech about why they should work together, and he says, we will defend this planet as the Justice League, and then they all fly off heroically and I'm thinking, yeah, this is not the Justice League's origin story. As of this story, the League has been around for like 10 years in the DC Universe. So uh, it's a little weird that they're acting like this is the first time that they've come together. Uh, in some ways, I think that this story would have worked better if this was the Justice League's origin story. If they had never worked together before, or at least they hadn't worked together as a team of this size, uh, if there had never been any other version of the Justice League before. Uh, because even though I mentioned this uh, in Grant Morrison's uh, JLA run when I was talking about that, uh, the Big Seven, if you will, uh, these guys that we see on the cover, they had not worked together since like the mid-1970s. Uh, even though they hadn't been together as a team, there had been a Justice League team consistently up until this point. Uh, it might have been characters you didn't care about, like uh, the Justice League Detroit run, or uh, some people may not like the Justice League International run, or the team that existed right before this. Uh, it may have been characters you didn't care about, but there was always a Justice League. Uh, so it's a little weird that this book is pretending like 
why it had been a really long time since the Justice League had formed. Uh, but uh, that's a fairly minor complaint, especially if you uh, are not uh, very knowledgeable about the Justice League. If you just pick this up and read this, uh, this works great as a little uh, preamble to Grant Morrison's JLA run, I think. Uh, also, uh, this does seemingly tie in with some of the stuff that came much later in Grant Morrison's League uh, run. At the very end, I want to say it was the final volume, Batman even references this story. Uh, he says, no man uh, mentioned some giant threat coming, and then they have to fight uh, the uh, the old god uh, Mageddon, or uh, Magadon, whatever his name was, uh, that was connected to the uh, the world that came before the fourth world characters. Uh, so uh, it's kind of cool that Mark Wade was setting up this thing, and then Grant Morrison pays it off at the end of his JLA run. That was like three years after the story. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I was reading, rereading uh, Grant Morrison's uh, finale to his JLA run, and when Batman mentioned that, I was thinking, wait, did that really get referenced in Midsummer's Nightmare? And then I reread this, and sure enough, it did. Uh, also, uh, Mark Wade uh, has at one point uh, the Martian Manhunter. Uh, he believes that he is with his family, and uh, one of his kids or his wife uh, mentions the Pale Martians, and I thought that was really cool. I had no idea that uh, the White Martians were mentioned before Grant Morrison's JLA run. Uh, it makes me think that Wade and Morrison were working much closer together uh, throughout uh, this era of the Justice League than I originally thought. And I knew that they were uh, pretty good friends. Uh, they worked together on uh, the weekly series 52. Uh, also, they uh, pitched with Mark Miller and Tom Pyre a uh, Superman 2000, kind of a re uh, revamp pitch, if you will, around this time, uh, just a year or two later. Uh, so I knew that they were good friends, but I didn't know that they were actually uh, kind of collaborating with each other. You know, Mark Wade does a JLA story, then Grant Moore and does a run, and then Mark Wade will do a fill-in issue, and then Mark Wade does a run. I didn't know that they were actually working together as much as they were here. It very much seems like Mark Wade is kind of asking Grant Morrison, hey, what's your first storyline going to be? And then uh, Morrison would say, it's going to be white Martians coming to Earth pretending to be good guys. And then Mark Wade kind of throws in a line in Midsummer's Nightmare about pale Martians. I think that's really cool. Uh, it makes it feel more cohesive than I originally thought uh, way back when I first read this story. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think this is pretty good. Uh, uh, just a few minor nitpicks uh, with this book. Uh, one thing that's a little weird is that Grant Morrison in the foreword of this talks about how uh, Mark Wade was almost single-handedly trying to de-darken superhero comics in the mid-90s. He talks about how uh, superhero comics were always fun, always had a sense of hope, a sense of wonderment, and then uh, the mid-1980s comes around and you get books like The Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns, which uh, Morrison does say those are really good books, but then he says that they spawned a host of imitators that weren't very good, and they basically were just really dark, uh, very grim and gritty, which is the uh, buzzword that you generally hear about books like that. And he says that those were not very good, and for the most part, I think that he was right. Uh, and it was really up until the mid-90s before you started to see people trying to get away from that era of superhero comics, uh, with uh, books like Kingdom Come or The Flash by Mark Wade, uh, where he was trying to bring back that sense of wonderment and hope with superhero comics that had kind of been taken away from the imitators of uh, The Watchmen in the Dark Knight Returns. And uh, I definitely agree with that sentiment. Mark Wade is very much a fan of the Silver Age and trying to uh, revamp, uh, bring back uh, what was great about the Silver Age, but do it with a modern sense of storytelling. Uh, Mark Wade does do that a lot. Uh, you read Kingdom Come, and that is definitely uh, the theme of that book. What's interesting is that Fabian Nicesia is one of those guys who is writing a lot of those not great superhero comics that were imitators of The Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, he was writing X Force at the time, uh, just a few years before Midsummer's Nightmare, and uh, those comics weren't very good. And uh, you look at Kingdom Come, and Kingdom Come is straight up uh, making fun of uh, characters like Cable from X-Force that uh, Fabian Nicesia had a hand in uh, shaping. Uh, so it's really weird that this is part of Mark Wade's little uh, renaissance trying to bring back uh, the wonders of the Silver Age, and he's doing it with Fabian Nicesia, who was one of the guys that uh, Mark Wade was kind of uh, reacting against from the early 90s. Uh, uh, very interesting, I thought. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm just reading too much into it, maybe Mark Wade is really great friends with Fabian Nicesia. They work together, uh, so they must not hate each other or anything, but I do find that to be a little odd. Uh, so anyway, I do recommend uh, Midsummer's Nightmare. I think this is a really good story, uh, especially if you like Grant Morrison's JLA. Uh, this is a nice little companion piece to that. Uh, written very differently than Morrison's style. Uh, they do have very different styles, but I think that they complement each other very much. Uh, so those are my thoughts on Midsummer's Nightmare. I hope that you guys like liked this review, and if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.